Wonderful. Wonderful. God is so good. God is so good. Praise God. All right, so we're going to pray, and, and then we'll start. Good to see you all. Praise the Lord. Father, we're so grateful to you for your love. We thank you for saving us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Also, thank you for making your home in us, dwelling in us by your Holy Spirit. We're grateful for your blessings that make rich, to which you add no sorrow. We ask that you teach us truth from your word to transform us. May the word of God build people up to receive that for which Christ died. I pray against any hindrances, any barriers in the name Jesus. By our God, we leap over walls, we break through troops. Thank you that every battle we have, in fact, is the Lord's. Yes and you fight for your people. So I thank you for breakthroughs. I thank you for miracles. I thank you for wonders and signs that God alone can do and will do by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm happy to see, you know, a lot of you coming back yeah. now. <laughs> I know because of technology, we get spoiled. <laughs> you can stay in your office, don't have to come. Uh, but mind you, I'm driving all the way, so. <laughs> so, God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. And then, I'll, well, thank God, you know, people online, you know, different parts of the world can also enjoy this uh, and, and uh, receive for their spiritual edification. Yes. God is good. So we use all available means to touch people. Yes. God is good. Amen. But it's good to see you <laughs> in person. Thank God. All right. So praise God. The word of God works. Amen. The Amen. word of God works. Amen. That uh, is what we're studying today. So those of you online, welcome. God bless you. And let's turn now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Hallelujah. The word of God works. All right, so in 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, it reads, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, Paul is, Paul is writing and referring to himself and his team, he said, you received it not as the word of men, <clears throat> but as it is in truth, in reality, you received it as what? The word of God, which effectually works also in you who believe. Amen. The word of God works. But you would notice from the scripture that it actually works for those who believe, who believe it to be God's word, that what they are hearing, what they are receiving is the word of God. Now, obviously, for us today, those of us who are alive uh, today, the Bible is now complete. The canon of scripture is complete. Um, we accept Genesis to Revelation as being God's word, written word for us. And so if somebody says they have a vision, a revelation, or God told them something, we can compare that supposed vision with the word of God. If it lines up with the written word of God, then that's fine. If it doesn't line up with the written word of God, it does not matter regardless of who's saying it, we respect them, we appreciate them, but we have to reject what they are saying 
because you cannot establish your life on something that is not God's word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Only God can confirm what he has said. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So, twice in this verse, 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13, Paul talks about believing the word as being God's word. I pointed out. All right. And keep in mind that when he was writing to them, the Bible wasn't complete. It had not been put together. Here and there, there were certain letters, scrolls that the Hebrews had, but the Bible had not been put together. So we have to actually give these people in Thessalonica, you know, uh, credit. We have to respect them for taking what Paul was saying to be God's word, you know. Obviously, they had watched Paul's life, you know, when you're consistent in bringing what is truthful, what is beneficial, and what glorifies God. People appreciate that. They respect that. And what he was saying, he, he backed it up. You know, he said that his preaching and teaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but was in demonstration of the spirit and of power so that the faith of people will be in God, not in men. Amen. So he was obviously directing the people to God, to Christ, Amen. not himself. I mean, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. It's a bit unfortunate that today, sometimes in some places, some uh, ministers just draw attention to themselves instead of, you know, the, directing the people to Christ. And, and that's just not right, you know. But... We, we can't help that. People are people. People who do what humans have done since the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Always trying to do things on our own without relying on God. And it doesn't help. It's a challenge that we all have, actually. Since sin came into the world, it's become natural to humans to do things in their own strength, rely on their own wisdom than God. It, it's just uh, the human thing. I know some of you are very different and God bless you. <laughs> but generally, most people, you know, we'll try it, at least try it ourselves. And then, you know, when we hit a brick wall, we're like, okay, God, uh, help me. David said something like that in, in Psalm 119. It's the longest psalm, the longest, you know, uh, chapter in the Bible. He said, uh, I went astray, you know, when everything was okay for me, and I was not talking to God, listening to God. And then when I got afflicted, I came back to my senses. Very interesting. In the same uh, hundred and, uh, Psalm 119, he says that. He said he went astray. He wasn't listening to God. And, of course, if you read about David's life, you know uh, he is very human. <laughs> to err uh, is human. Uh, but to forgive is divine. And when he repented, God forgave him. He's done that for all of us through Christ. And we're so grateful. Amen. Because if God dealt with us after our sins, I mean, where would we be? Yeah, in Psalm 103, it says he's not dealt with us after our sins. But as a father deals with his children, so has God dealt with us. Amen. All right, so uh, First Thessalonians, I'm sorry, uh, First Thessalonians 2, chapter 2, again, verse 13, two places Paul mentions believing the word to be God's word. So let's look at it again, please. For this cause, also thank we God without season, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you received it not as a word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. So they received the word of God as God's word. Paul is preaching it, they're hearing, and they're like, okay, I take this. 
And then Paul says again, the word which effectually also, which effectually works also in you who believe. Amen. That is to say that today, those of us who believe God's word, that word will work in us. Amen. You should expect God's word to work for you. Amen. It will work. Amen. Amen. There will be a performance of what you believe. Amen. Not what you don't believe, but what you believe. So your the manifestation of God's word in your life, the fulfillment of God's word in your life, has something to do with you exercising your faith. With, with a person saying, God, I believe you. You follow me? Yes. So in other words... God will respond to your faith. It pleases him when somebody believes him. And he rewards those who believe him. You know, Hebrews 11 tells us that in verse 6. Uh, most of you know that, that, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And anyone who comes to God must believe that he is God. He's alive and he is God. We are not, but he is. And he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Don't feel bad for expecting rewards from God. No, sometimes people have, you know, they feel guilty or, you know. No, 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 no. God is a rewarder Amen. of those who diligently seek him. Jesus many times promised rewards to those who overcome, rewards to those who work for him. Amen. Amen. Blessed are the dead, those who die in Christ. Do you know, do you, do you know that we came into this world with nothing? Yes. And we will take nothing with us. Mm -hmm. But anytime people say we'll take nothing with us, I correct them. Yes. We will take something with us. Yes. You know? Yes. Let me show you. <laughs> Revelation 14 and verse 13. Revelation 14 and verse 13. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. If somebody finds it, uh, you can read it. Revelation 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Amen. Yes. <laughs> there it is. Your works will follow you. Hallelujah. Your works will follow you. So, those of you online, if you didn't know it, now you know it. Your works will follow you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we brought nothing material into the world and we we'll take nothing material out. But our works for the Lord are written, they are recorded. Do you know the name of the book? We're learning some new, fresh things today that have always been in the Bible. The book that records our works is called the book of remembrance the book of remembrance the prophet malachi called it the book of remembrance amen. amen your works our works are recorded in there what we do for the lord amen if it's a good work you get rewards if your motives were wrong so outwardly it appeared to be good, but God looks on the heart. And if you knew that the motives were selfish or self-centered or not to glorify him, you actually don't get any reward for it. Even though somebody may say thank you or somebody may say, oh, good work. But God says, no, no, no. You know, the heart, that was not, you're not doing it to glorify me. It was just about self. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah. That, that work will be, what is, our works will be tested. Mm -hmm. The imagery that's given to us 
uh, in the Bible, but how Jesus, our Lord, would test our works is that his eyes are like a flame of fire. His eyes. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Jesus as judge, his eyes don't look like a lamb. <laughs> no lovey-dovey here. <laughs> no, he's a judge. <laughs> That's why in the book of Revelation, when John saw Jesus, he fell down like he was dead. He was, it scared him. Now, this is somebody who had been so close to him and he used to put his head on his chest. Yes, yes, yes. And the Bible says the disciple whom Jesus loved. Mm -hmm. You know, but when he saw Jesus uh, in, in the book of Revelation, that vision, he said his eyes were like a flame of fire. Mm -hmm. And he, he wasn't used to that. He was like, whoa. No, <laughs> I, I've, I've not seen this, <laughs> you know, and uh, then he saw him as judge. Well, in, in 1 Corinthians 3, I, I know I'm kind of bouncing around, but in 1 Corinthians 3, the Bible says our works will be judged as by fire, as by fire. We will be saved. I'm, I'm not, I notice I'm talking about works. This is not our salvation. This is the work we do for God. You've already passed from eternal death to eternal life. Amen. When you receive Jesus, you've passed from death to life. So that's, that's not, you're not going to be judged for that. Because you're not going to heaven because of what you have done. Amen. It's because of your faith in Jesus, Amen. what he did. Mm -hmm. Are we good? We are good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're saved by grace. It's not of works. <laughs> Amen. Our own works are like filthy rags before God. So we thank God for Jesus. But after that, the works we do for the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 3, the Bible says that, maybe verse 15, I think. 13. 13? Okay, wow. I'm glad you came today. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 3. So I didn't say it, she said it, all right, 13. So, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall test every man's work of what sort it is. You see this? The fire are the fiery eyes of Jesus. As a judge. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Because we are judged before Jesus. That we are the judgment seat of Christ. Believers. Not, not every human being. But just believers. We'll be at the judgment seat of Christ. And if your work. Oh let's just read it. Because this tells us 14. If any man's work remain. Which he has built thereon. He shall receive a reward. 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. That's what I was saying. You know, yet so as by fire, you know, he's saved. <laughs> sort of by the skin of his teeth, huh? <laughs> yeah. So we can suffer loss. E even in heaven. You've made it to heaven, but you suffered loss because, you know, maybe all the works you did is just so people would say you're great and it's not really um, to honor God. You know, whatever the reasons are, God tests the motives of the hearts. So if the work is pure, the Bible describes it this way. It's like gold, silver, or precious stone. If the work is impure, God sees it as wood, hay, and stubble. Now imagine if you test wood, hay, and stubble by fire. What happens? It gets burned. But gold, silver, and precious stones, what would the fire do to that? Purify. Is the image beautiful? Yeah. Anyway, but that's not my main subject today. All right. My main subject is that God's word works. But it works in those who believe it. God responds to faith. 
what moves God is you believe in him. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get emotional in life over our challenging times. And that's okay because we're human. It's okay we're human. But don't stop there. Don't just cry and stop there and say, well, God, I'm really pitiful right now, so look at me and be moved. No. God responds to the faith of the believer. It doesn't respond because you're crying too much. Oh, God, don't you see that my husband is suffering? You know, he's not really had a job for the past six months, or they're being harsh on him at work. God, don't you see? Are you not concerned? He is, of course, concerned. That is why he wrote 66 books in one volume and told you how to deal with that situation in everything by prayer and supplication supplication let your request be made known to god so let me come back to the situation where you're emotional you say oh god don't you care don't you see that my my husband is suffering you have not made a request yet you've complained yes you've cried maybe even fasted but you still have not made a request what do you want it, one time that really shook me. It, it turned my thinking around. When I was reading the scripture and it said, let me actually take you there and show you this. In, in is it Mark 10? Uh, let's go to Mark 10. I believe it's, it's in Mark 10. Um, I think God just called you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's see. Mark chapter 10. Watch this. Verse 46. Um, verse 46. If somebody has it, you, you can read. For this. I haven't heard some of your voices in a while, so I'll have you read. <laughs> All right. Mark 10, 46. And I'll point out, for those of you online, I'm going to point out this. We're going to read about it, this blind man mm -hmm. who's screaming, uh, Jesus, help me, you know, help me. And obviously, Jesus could tell he was blind. There were people around who saw him blind and told him, hush up, be quiet. But Jesus still asked him, what do you want from me? And I remember reading this, you know, a long time ago, and I was like, wait a minute. Everybody sees he's blind. There's a blind man asking you for help. Isn't it obvious that he wants to see? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. You can read this because we don't have time to, to go to it. But you can read this later on. In Acts chapter 3. Just read it later on. In Acts chapter 3. Peter and John are about to go into the temple to, to pray. And they see a cripple. Who was at the, at the gate called Beautiful. Asking for money. Begging for money. When he saw Peter and John, he stopped them. And the Bible says he asked them for what? For money. So the fact that somebody is crippled, stops you, and says, help me, does not mean that they are asking for you to pray for them to walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This happened to me. Believe it or not, it doesn't matter to me, but I experienced this. I said it because it sounds strange. In fact, it was strange to me the first time it happened. And, and the only time this has happened to me. This happened in London. Uh, a friend of mine, we lived in a hostel, and he invited me to go minister to a friend of his who was crippled. And, well, you know, at the time, I was leading some meetings in... And it's a Christian hostel, you know, Pentecostal. And I use the church, the, the church that owned the hostel. Mm -hmm. I use the church for miracle meetings. And so, and God was just moving. We were like 20 something, 22, 23 college students just on fire for God. And there's this mighty revival in North London. God is just healing people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this, this young man said, well, come pray for a friend of mine. So we go to his house and, uh, you know, we sit around, we're chatting. And then after a while, I start to minister. 
And I, and I just felt led that we pray in the spirit. So we started to pray in, in tongues, in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I, the, the gentleman who invited me, he was also spirit filled. He stopped praying. I noticed I was the only one praying. It was a bit strange, you know, I prayed for a while and then I also stopped. And then he said something to me. My friend said something to me that I didn't understand. He, he spoke to me in Russian. I didn't understand. So I'm looking at him and he said, well, you just spoke in Russian. I said, I did? He said, yeah, you are talking to my friend that he needs to humble himself. God has come to heal him, but he does not want to receive healing. I was like, whoa, you mean I said all that? He said, yeah, that is why I spoke to you in Russian because you spoke perfect Russian to him. This, this actually happened to me. I'm not saying it to make myself look, I mean, it was strange. It was, it, I was like, really? He said, yeah, that's, he said, that's why I spoke to you in Russian. Because I thought you, you, you speak Russian. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He did not want to be healed. And it was strange to me. And I can't, I'd come from Africa. I'm a student there, you know, come from a miracle ministry. You see blind eyes open, you see God raise people. If you're crippled in Africa and God's healing people, you want to be healed. So that was my mindset. He didn't want to be, and I did not understand. Why would you not want to be healed? He lived in this community. This is in Britain. That the government has set up for them, for disabled people. And you, your only right to live there was that you had to be, that it was for disabled people. So he was going to lose that. Yeah, he's going to lose that. We went back to visit another time, and he wasn't there. Where was he? he? They were on vacation in Paris. So they had this, like, nice life, you know. Now, you have to think, you're, you're 22. You've come from Africa. You're in this place. And, the, and the, you mean the government has this set up for them? It was very strange to me. Yeah, but because of that, he didn't want to be healed. Because he was going to lose that. Instead of receiving his healing and using his brains, thanking God, he uses his brains to build whatever life he wants. Yeah. I mean, you, you'd be surprised. There's some people who'd rather depend on handouts from the government than, even in America, than, you know, make, do some, build a life for themselves. I mean, I don't get that mindset, but uh, I... Again, I'm teaching at the World Bank, and you, I mean, the environment you work in and your education and professionalism, you don't think that way. But there are people who think what I'm saying. They, I mean, it happened to me. He didn't want to be healed. So in Acts chapter 3, the cripple asked Peter and John for money. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give to you. Actually, I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to have to, I think, I have some time. I'm going to have to take you there and show you something about expectation. You, you have to believe God. You have to expect good things. Hope is earnest expectation of good coming to you. I have come to tell you at the World Bank, you need to have our next expectation of good coming to you in your career. Amen. I decree and declare that the Lord will lift you up because your promotion does not come from human beings. According to Psalm 75, your promotion comes from God. And I've come as a minister of the Lord to bless you because God says when the ministers bless you, he will bless you indeed. May the Lord bless you. May hindrances, opposition, before you fall for your sake. Just as the Lord said in Zechariah chapter 4, Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, my son, you this mountain, you shall become a plain. In Zechariah chapter 4, that mountain was a person. Some of you have mountains standing before your career progress. In the name of Jesus, I declare that those mountains, just like in Zechariah chapter 4, shall be removed. They shall become a plain in Jesus' name. You look for them and find them no more. 
if they don't repent and stand in opposition to you as a child of God, I decree and declare. God who said, decree a thing and it shall be established. I decree and declare that they will not stand before you anymore in Jesus' name. And if they don't repent like Pharaoh did not repent, came against the Israelites to try to kill them, they will lose and not you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are blessed. You are blessed. Do you all know that there was a time here, right here in the World Bank, one of the, the uh, people who used to attend the Bible study, you know, some, some executive level, but anyway, uh, one of the vice presidents threatened her, her job, and gave her a date that you will be fired, and he was going to make sure that she never got any contract, never got employed by the World Bank Group, or ever got contract as an independent uh, contractor once she was fired. I was a pastor, and she told me. And I said, we walk in love. We never pray that anybody would lose anything. But he has touched a child of God. And we are giving him this time to repent. If he does not withdraw what he has said. And he was unfairly treating this lady. If he does not repent, what he has said will come on him. Not a child of God. Yeah. He was driven out of the World Bank like chicken. The words that he said were put on his file. And he never got a contract. When he was fired, he never did. The, the exact words that he spoke were put on his file. Yeah. For the word of God, I'm teaching you today uh, that the word of God works. And one of the scriptures we're going to go to after, after I show you this in Mark, Mark 10. One of the scriptures we'll go to today is Isaiah 50, 55. And in Isaiah 55, when we go there, I'll point this out to you. It says, the word of God will not go and return empty to God. The word will accomplish what God sent it to do. Amen. So what he spoke against that child of God, like Pharaoh spoke against Moses and the Israelites. Moses gave Pharaoh a chance to take it back. He did. He said, he said take it back. Withdraw what you've said, because it's not going to come on me. It will come on you. And Pharaoh didn't withdraw it. But God defends his children. Amen. God protects his children. Yeah. It's the Lord who opened the door and brought you here. Amen. Nobody has a right to take yeah. you out. The earth belongs to the Lord Amen. and the fullness thereof. Amen. I don't know why I'm ministering this way today, but maybe somebody here at the World Bank needs it. God will protect you, your livelihood, your career, and your peace of mind. Oh, yes. Jesus, he died for us to have peace of mind. I'll tell you this. We learn a lot of like, things that may challenge some people here for the first time. Jesus actually didn't die, so we'll go to heaven. Well, why are you here? You're born again, right? Why are you not in heaven? Why are you still here? He didn't die so he would go to heaven. No. He died to give you eternal life. Now, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you may have life. Not die and go to heaven, but have life here. And life more abundantly. Yes, when we die, our spirit immediately goes to be with the Lord. And our body gets buried and awaits the resurrection. Yes, we know that. But that, that is not his purpose. He wants you to reflect his nature on earth. He wants you to be able to tell people about Jesus. Bring people to Christ. Tell them God will heal them. God will deliver them. What I'm teaching you today, that his word works. So that when we die and go to heaven, your works will follow you. The works you do for him are important to him. He didn't save you just so you go to heaven, you know, 
uh, you know, I, I'm having a hard time. Lord, just come and take me. That mindset that some Christians have, that defeatist mindset is not of God. He didn't create you to run away from the devil. He created you to give you victory in this life so that in his name, you will see the enemy flee from you. In his name, you will cast out demons. Today, we have the mindset that only Pastor Turkson or preachers cast out demons. No, it is all born again believers who are supposed to cast out demons with the name of Jesus. So Isaiah 53, remember that. The word of God that has gone out of God's mouth will not return empty to God. It will accomplish what God has sent it. But, but you need to know that God wants you to hide his word in his heart. And that you will say it, you will speak it. Because you are God's mouthpiece. Yes. Amen. He sent the prophets to go and speak to the Israelites. They were God's mouthpiece. God was using people. None of the prophet Samuel's words fell to the ground useless. Everything he said, that he said, God told me, came to pass. Amen. 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 Today I'm telling you the testimony of somebody who used to work, he has retired. She's probably watching online right now. <laughs> Maybe on the beach in, you know, the Caribbean somewhere. <laughs> you guys know I've been doing this year since 1987. Yeah, started at the IFC building. Last week we had a lady from the IFC, came for the first time, a Chinese lady. And she said, would you please come back to the IFC? Leave these, these World Bank people. <laughs> well... Act, so, uh, yeah, I know. Acts chapter 3. All right, I, want to, I want to point this out to you. So, look at this. Expectation. Acts 3. Are you there? Look at this. Verse 4. And Peter, fastened his eyes upon the cripple, said, Look on us. And the man gave heed unto them. Watch this. Verse 5. He gave heed unto, unto them, what? Expecting to receive something from them. Amen. Expecting to receive something. Obviously, he was expecting money. We know that. Technically, it's money that he wanted. But I want you to note that he still had an expectation. And he received something. Better than what he had asked for. Amen. More than what he had asked for. I pray Ephesians 3.20 for you. That now unto him God. Who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that you ask. And all that you expect. May he do it by the power of his Holy Spirit. At work in you right here at the World Bank. And anybody watching online. I mean our God is a good God. He's a miracle working God. This man expected money. He was expect, he says he's expected to receive something. And Peter said silver and gold have I none. But such as I have give I to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the power of God came upon him. And he leapt and he walked. I pray that the same power of God will come upon you. Amen. You see, this was unexpected. He's expecting something from them, but he, he did not know that the power of God will come upon him. Even Peter did not know this is the way God was going to work. Peter just said, in Jesus' name, rise up and walk. He expects him to walk, but Peter did not know how God was going to do it. It's not your business and my business to figure out how God's going to do it. Amen. It's not our place to tell God, God, well, I want you to do it this way. No. <laughs> Just pray and expect. Amen. Yes. And Ephesians 3.20 says, you do exceed him above what you asked for. And what you even think about, what you imagine. This is how God works. And for me, I see his grace. I see his goodness. Why? Because he's not even moving or responding based on what I asked. He's answering based on his nature. Yes. He does 
exceeding abundantly. Amen. He's extravagant. Amen. His name is El Shaddai. You know what that means? He's more than enough. God is, he's more than enough. Oh, may God bless you today. There's a pain in your body. May God not only take that pain, but give you a healing anointing. So that when you pray for the sick, they will be healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. You're having problems in your career. May God promote you. And may God bless you financially so you'll be able to give to those who don't have. I mean, beyond your wildest expectations, the Lord do that for you in Jesus' name. He is able to do it, but you have to expect it. There'll be a performance of what you believe. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go to Mark 10, please. And I was asking if uh, you could read. Let's see. We have time. Yeah. Please somebody read from 46 to 49. Uh, 49. I'll point something out to you in 49. Uh, for, from, for, you can read? Yes. Okay, please. Mark 10, 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciple, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 49. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, be of good comfort, rise, he call it thee. Amen. Amen. All right. And then watch where I said Jesus. I was surprised one day that Jesus actually asked him what he wanted. That's in verse 51. But verse 50, and he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. 51. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what do you want me to do? for you. How many of you agree that Jesus is the exact image or representation of God? Yes. yes. Those of you online, I'm sure agree. Jesus was the exact image of God on earth. He said, what I hear my father saying, that's what I say. Amen. What I see my father doing, that's what I do. Right? So, we, could f we can fairly, based on what Jesus, his behavior here, we can surmise that God will do the same. Amen. Jesus asked him, what do you want? Mm -hmm. you, you can be screaming, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. He heard all that, but he still said, what do you want? What kind of mercy do you want? There's mercy that saves. There's healing mercies. There's financial blessing mercy. What? There's mercy that exalts. Which one? What's, what? Which one? So your husband is struggling financially. Oh, your daughter is going through something. Don't, God, I don't know what, what you're doing. I don't know what you're, when you're going to move. I don't know. Well, when was the last time you actually tell, told him what you want? We need to know that God is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. If we make our request known to him, we need to believe that he has heard that request. And we've received what we prayed for. And we shall have it. Amen. There's a way God works. And he's revealed it in the Bible. It's amazing that Jesus asked him, what do you want? And the man said, that I may see. 
And watch this. Oh, look at this. This is, this is amazing. We already talked about it. But Mark 10. It says, The blind man said, said unto him in verse 51, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Specific. Clear. To the point. Ask and you shall receive. Seek, you'll find. Knock, it shall be open. Be clear, be concise, be specific. Find a scripture that relates to what you want. And say, Lord, you said in your word, if I ask anything according to your will, you hear me. This is your will. You said, I, you will I'll take sickness away from you. I am the Lord that heals you. Well, I believe for this. I receive it see that now watch jesus jesus didn't just heal the man watch what jesus did jesus said to him go your way your faith has made you whole wholeness so whatever else this man needed that we don't we are not aware of the lord took care of it lack of self-esteem insecurity whatever took care of it because there's a woman who touched Jesus you, most of us know the story the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus and the power of God went through out of Jesus and healed her instantly she was already healed and Jesus said who touched me and the disciples said but everybody's touching you she said he said no somebody touched me with what faith what I've been teaching you today. The word works, but it works towards those who believe. Your believing is like a magnet that attracts God's miracle working power to you. Do you see? Did you get something today? Yes. yes. Jesus said, the disciples said, but everybody's touching you. But they, or the crowd, is, you can be in a meeting and there's a lot of people and nothing happens. The miracle happens for only one person. Why? Because one person believes. Yeah. Jesus said, but somebody touched me with faith. And looked around and said, looked around for, for, the, for her. So she knew he knew it was a female. Yeah. When you read it, it says, yeah, he looked to see her who had touched him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Indeed. Yeah. And then he said, daughter, watch this. Go and behold. She had already been healed, but he said, behold, he did exceeding abundantly. That when she touched him, she was healed. Yet Jesus still said, go and behold, for your faith has made you what? Whole. Oh, I pray for you today. My time is up, but I pray for you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. That if it is healing, God will not only give it to you, but make you whole. Strengthen you, give you power, touch you in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. Let there be a performance of what you have believed. Just as it was told Mary, there shall be a performance of the word that was given to her that you bear the Son of God. And she said, Let it be to me as you have said. May you receive. By the spoken word of God, by the rhema of God that you've heard in your spirit today. Or revelation has come to you from the written word of God. May you receive your miracle. May you receive your breakthrough. May Jesus, the living word, stop right now and attend to your need. Just as he stopped and attended to the blind man. May he stop and attend to you. Receive your miracle. Receive your breakthrough. By the faith of God, I call it down. Thank you, Father, that your word that says, by Jesus Christ we are healed, has happened. Thank you that your word that says promotion comes from God has happened for God's people today here at the World Bank and people online. Thank you. Thank you that your word that says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved and your house has happened for anybody watching from around the world, receiving this message, fellowshipping with us. Thank you that they receive salvation from sin. 
deliverance from oppression, healing of their disease. In the name of Jesus, may the blessing of God that make rich, to which God adds no sorrow, be yours today and evermore. In Jesus' matchless name, by the faith of God, I call it down. Thank you, Father. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. It's good to see you. Those who join with us online today, God bless you. We'll see you here at the World Bank next week, Wednesday. Tell somebody, if you join online, tell somebody uh, wherever you are to, to join with us. All right? Uh, it's 1.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, U.S. Time. Uh, Wednesdays here at the World Bank. God bless you. Miss Co Corinne, we'll see you next. Colleen, Colleen, we'll see you next Wednesday. God bless. All right? Okay. I'm